ako urong dito. And I said, I would stake my honor, my life, and even the presidency. Don't 
Magandang hapon po, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are here for our regular Real Numbers PH Year 2. Today we have here with us Director Derek Carion and Police Superintendent Kim Molitas from the PNP. Thank you, ma'am. On the updated figures of hashtag Real Numbers PH, from July 1 to September 30, 2018, a total of 110,395 anti-drug operations were conducted by the PIDEA, the Philippine National Police, and other law enforcement agencies nationwide. This is an increase of 2,336. It resulted in the arrest of 158,424 drug personalities, an increase of 3,231. While there is an increase of 94 drug personalities who were casualties on the same period, bringing the number to 4,948. For the next card, I turn you over to Police Superintendent Molitas, ma'am. Yes, uh, once again, good afternoon. On behalf of the Chief of the Philippine National Police and the spokesperson, Police Chief Superintendent uh, Dorana, I'm Police Superintendent Kimberly Molitas, the Deputy Spokesperson for the Philippine National Police. And I'd like to give a summary of the arrested government workers um, from on the same period uh, that my colleague here has announced from July to now. As a result of the law enforcement efforts against high-value targets, a total of 582 government workers, including 272 government employees, 250 elected officials, and 60 uniform personnel were arrested for violation of the Republic Act 9165. Um, this is in line, of course, with the President's call uh, to cleansing the bureaucracy of corrupt public servants. We also have dismantled uh, clandestine laboratories and drug dens for that uh, same period in pursuit of the government's effort to destroy the sources of illegal drugs. Uh, PIDEA and other law enforcement uh, agencies um, had dismantled a total of 13 clandestine laboratories, um, manufacturing laboratories, drug dens, which serve as a one-stop shop for sellers and buyers of illegal drugs. Um, they're also targeted by law enforcement agencies. As a result, uh, during the same period, we have um, dismantled 242 drug dens in the country. And um, finally, for our, of course, continued internal cleansing program in the Philippine National Police, we have uh, dismissed uh, from service 286 personnel for illegal drug use, and we have also dismissed from the service 105 uh, personnel for um, drug-related offenses. Thank you, ma'am. To continue, on the total value of drugs that were seized or confiscated, a total of 25.01 billion pesos worth of drugs were seized for the period. This is an increase of 891 million pesos. And for the same period, 3,271.52 kilograms of shabu worth 18.27 billion pesos were confiscated by PIDEA, the PNP, and other law enforcement agencies nationwide. This is an increase of 129.12 kilograms and 878 million pesos worth, respectively. Sources of Shabu are mainly from smuggling and manufacturing. Now, for the same period, 1,076.01 kilograms of Shabu were confiscated from smuggling and 410 kilograms for 410.07 kilograms were from manufacturing which are the dismantling of the clandestine laboratories and as of September 30, 2018 we have cleared 8,766 barangays this, and while 23,262 barangays are yet to be cleared, we have an increase of 322 or 3.81% from the last period. Let us explain briefly 
or the concept of barangay drug clearing. Drug cleared barangays are those that were categorized to have been drug affected but have been successfully uh, subjected to barangay drug clearing program which entails interventions for drug users, arrest of drug personalities, the removal of transshipment points, manufacturing facilities or fa plantations, and likewise the existence of a voluntary rehabilitation or referral desk in the barangay level, which makes the barangay and the local government unit as a whole cleared from the illegal drug problem. In a nutshell, this is uh, the concept of barangay drug clearing. And most important of all is that after the pre-operation, operation, and operation phase rather, is the existence of a post-operation program to ensure the drug cleared status of the barangay. So those are the figures. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. If there are updates from the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency and the PNP, As an added update, ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is uh, happy to note the following. Uh, let me give you a brief background on the total volume and value of drugs that were destroyed, that were uh, in, or in PDEA custody, and that have been properly accounted for. In July 2016, 1.35 tons of dangerous drugs were in the custody of PDEA. Now, due to the intensive campaign against illegal drugs, the volume of confiscated dangerous drugs has dramatically increased. However, due to the directive of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte to expedite court proceedings on illegal drugs, a total of 3,815, 3,815.21 kilograms, or that's more or less 3.8 tons, of solid dangerous drugs and 5,608.49 liters of liquid dangerous drugs amounting to 21.75 billion pesos have been destroyed. This is for the period from July 2016 to present. Included in these destroyed dangerous drugs are the following huge volumes of confiscations. One, Shabu, the quantity is 180.9 kilograms confiscated in Claveria, Cagayan, in July of 2016. There was also shabu and liquid shabu at 802 kilograms and 1,070 liters confiscated from suspects Che Wende, alias Jackie Tan. Third, 502.098 kilograms confiscated, or that is, and uh, together with Another 100.18 kilograms, a total of 604 billion, or that's 604 billion worth of shabu, which was the ones contained in the paper rollers recovered in Valenzuela in 2016, also already destroyed, and that is among others. So currently, as an update, 3.45 tons of assorted dangerous drugs remain to be in PDEA custody, of which. 1.8 tons are shabu, and on October 26, this is this coming Friday, 1.4 tons will be destroyed in Trece Martires Cavite, bringing down the remaining amount or the remaining volume in custody to 2.05 tons. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, whatever was given by PIDEA, update on mm -hmm. those which were destroyed already and those which will be uh, destroyed this coming Friday, that is an offshoot of the question last month, the other month, on how, how, how much and how many kilo kilograms or tons have already been destroyed out of all those uh, which were confiscated or uh, confiscated or brought to the custody of uh, the enforcement uh, agencies. So with that, of course, um, we hope that we're giving updates. We hope that we're answering the questions. And of course, we'd like to call uh, on um, the, our partners in the legislature to look into uh, the process on how uh, they can, they can um, um, fast track the um, the processes in our courts 
in order for all the dangerous drugs which were confiscated years back to be, to be destroyed uh, right away, if, uh, if there is just a way. Thank you. Um, if there are any other updates, if there are none, um, we proceed to the question and answer. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, mem members of our media. Thank you for coming. We are now opening the floor for questions and answers for our dear speakers. Who wants to be first? Anyone from the media who wants to be first? Please raise your hand there. Uh, please uh, indicate your, your media affiliation. Thank you. Good afternoon po. I'm Patricia Mangune from TV5. Um, Sir Derek, can I just clarify the figures you gave about destroyed uh, illegal drugs? That's only on the part of PIDEA or is that consolidated with the PNP? It is consolidated, ma'am, because by law, all law enforcement agencies submit their pieces of evidence to us once ordered by the court. And it is only PIDEA that is mandated by law to cause the destruction of these dangerous drugs. Uh, sir, could you just give us uh, an idea for those who don't know yet how these illegal drugs are destroyed? Okay, ma'am. Normally, it is done by, well, basically the concept of burning uh, in layman's terms. But the, uh, the actual process is called thermal decomposition. It's done in a DNR-accredited facility at the outskirts. It's located in Trece Martires Cavite. Although there is one facility also nearby in Malabon, but it is only capable of burning about uh, a maximum of 500 kilograms per batch. Unlike in Trece Martires Cavite, where the facility is able to accommodate even tons of dangerous drugs, which is why the activity on Friday, although uh, it, is, it doesn't entail a big program like the usual, happens in, it will be happening in Trece Martires Cavite. But in the next activity, perhaps, uh, in the next major program, we will be inviting, uh, we usually invite media together with representatives from the court, the prosecution, the accused or his counsel, and even civil society groups. And uh, yes, as I mentioned, the media to witness the, the process. Sir, one last follow-up. So, sir, there's no risk of inhaling any dangerous smoke or from, from these drugs? Wala po, ma'am, because uh, the incinerator itself or the thermal decomposition machine is sealed and uh, there is a primary and secondary chamber so that anything that is not burned in the primary chamber passes through the secondary chamber before it goes out into the stack, into the smokestack, as harmless fumes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. For the other questions, please, so we have our mic here in the middle of our, other, our seat, so... Anybody who wants to have questions, Pa? Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, Po. Donna Magsino from GMA News Online. Um, I have a question for uh, Police Superintendent Kimberly Molitas. Ma'am, uh, since uh, we're talking about numbers here, PNP Chief Albayalde mentioned yesterday that the crime rates in the cr country has decreased by 17%. Uh, how do we uh, correlate the numbers that we present here dun po sa pagbaba ng crime rate sa bansa? And uh, any updates on uh, the Sagay killings po? If any. Sa on the what? The Sagay killings in Negros Occidental. Medyo hindi po siya related, pero... Uh, I'm sorry, baka. that's not... Uh, it's another topic. Mm -hmm. I think we're here for the real the numbers. Yes. Okay, so, so numbers. But as for the decrease of crimes, the we have always uh, said, uh, then and now, that it the eight focus crimes here in the country is... Uh, strongly related to the use of drugs, for example, theft, robbery, carnapping, yon. Uh, bumaba po yun, we have decreased to at least 17% uh, mm -hmm. uh, from the period that we have mentioned, from the, what the Chief PNP has mentioned uh, yesterday of the decrease. Uh, the results came from the scientific study that we go through dun sa aming uh, OPER na tinatawag sa Philippine National Police. And yung eight major crimes na yon, those are the focus crimes that we look at 
um, because that from the beginning of the anti-drug uh, campaign that we we implemented, we have also looked at um, those crimes related to the use of illegal drugs. Okay, ma'am. For PCOO ASIC po, ma'am, uh, any reaction po? Since we're talking about transparency here and uh, responsible sharing of information, any reaction from PCOO dun po sa pagpuput daw ng Facebook sa ilang accounts na pro Duterte and pro Amy Marcos because of alleged bad and non-substantive content. Yes, we will look into the matter. We are actually looking into the matter para malaman din namin kung uh, kung uh, ano yung parameters nila, kung totoo man na ganyan ang ginawa nila. Um, at least malalaman namin kung paano po um, ire-request din sa kanila kung anong pwedeng uh, pwedeng maitulong ng uh, PCOO. Uh, sa ngayon, ma'am, ano po ba yung mga measures ng PCOO uh, to promote responsible sharing of information, lalo na maingay po sa social media, yung mga discussions under the administration of President Duterte. Ano po yung mensahe ninyo o paalala sa netizens uh, who claim to be pro-admin? Yes, um, either pro or against the administration. We had always been we had always been uh, fair in so far as uh, disseminating information proper the way on how to be responsible in sharing information. And we've been around the country since last year. Dito po si Director Pebbles Duque dismiss uh, this information, yung mga campaign natin, and um, yung mga activities po and mga forum na ginagawa po ng ating PIA at ng uh, ating ibang ahensya to partner with the local government information officers para po uh, mas responsable sila dun sa pag-share ng mga information na kumakalat. And of course, hindi lang dun sa pag-share, dun sa pag-inform din. Alimbawa, may, it's so um, napaka-abundant po ng information ngayon. Napaka, napakadali po na makakalap ng mga informasyon. So, uh, hindi lang siguro, nung time siguro noon na mabagal ang internet, tapos hindi, ta, hindi masyadong accessible din sa mga probinsya ang, uh, ang Facebook at iba pang social media platforms, kaya siguro natatagalan. This time, medyo kahit na hindi pro administration kahit pro administration kung minsan um, we we don't we don't uh, put color in everything that we do especially in the campaign dun sa uh, pagpapalawig po dun sa paglaban natin ng disinformation thank you very much ma and last question po kay Pideya director kayo and uh, clarification so yung pong uh, pag destroy dun sa mga seized uh, illegal drugs sa October 26 hindi po siya open sa media well, since it is not involved in any case, we have invited a limited number of... But if you want to witness, pwede rin po, but we'd like to, uh, of course, not, not really caution, but uh, we'd like to warn you na hindi siya yung gaya nung bonggang event na malaki na... Kasi po, this, this uh, volume that we're about to destroy actually involves no case, uh, no person arrested, but was turned over by our counterparts from the Philippine National Police. And we felt it right to immediately dispose of it because uh, we've heard medyo matagal na po siyang nasa custody at uh, kailangan na siya talagang ma-dispose. Okay. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. So, any other media who wants to have uh, the opportunity to ask question, please come in the middle lang. Any other? Yes, please. Hello po, good afternoon again from TV5, Patricia Mangune. Um, speaking of numbers, um, do we have an update on the narco list um, and whether the numbers from the deaths of mayors and vice mayors, are? can you confirm whether they are part of the narco list? Or? Well, I uh, happen to remember last week's uh, press briefing in uh, the Pidea National Headquarters. Our Director General Aaron N. Aquino has given a figure of 85 mm -hmm. uh, because of the original 93 uh, minus four who have been killed and four who have been arrested, the details of which, unfortunately, I don't remember all. Okay. Yung mga, kung sino yung arresto or sino yung uh, na, napatay, no? So, but definitely, yun yun, updated number, it's 85. 85. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions from our fr uh, media friends here? Yes, please, ma'am. Good 
afternoon po. Ako po si Cathy, maglalang from UNTV. Uh, itatanong lang po namin kung pabor po ba kayo na isa ilalim sa surprise drug testing ang lahat po ng uh, kakandidato sa 2019 midterm elections. Thank you so much po. Uh, okay, thank you ma'am for your question. Nilinaw po yan ni Director General Aron Aquino na para sa kanya, it is more of, well, sabi niya, well and good kung merong magkukusa. In fact, as we speak, nitingnan ko po yung oras. In about uh, seven minutes, one of the candidates who filed her, oh, clue, her certificate of candidacy is on her way to our office to voluntarily submit herself for a drug test. However, kung titingnan po natin, may ruling na po ng Supreme Court hinggil sa uh, yung pag-impose ng drug test on candidates because uh, apparently the Supreme Court has ruled that it is unconstitutional because it runs counter to the uh, requirements already embodied in the Omnibus Election Code. So the uh, same is true with uh, uh, certain persons charged before the prosecution office and there were some... Except for, katulad namin ni uh, Superintendent Kim, uh, we were members of the military uh, and law enforcement uh, agencies, mandatory talaga sa amin. And like in certain offices where there is an internal policy on the drug-free workplace. But for candidates, uh, nasa sa kanila na lang huyun kung magkukusa sila. Kasi, uh, and... and Kasi ang sabi lang ni Director General Aron Aquino, timing is of the essence kasi rito sa drug test. Kung alam ng isang tao na dadaan siya sa drug test, so most likely, uh, he or she, if he does, God forbid, use, will just abstain and then eventually submit for a drug test. So it, it's, it's, it doesn't really serve a, a higher purpose kung alam mo kung kailan. But it doesn't hurt either if you will, you know, voluntarily show as a matter of your personal advocacy na magpapadrug test ka. Yes, I would stand to I would stand to um, the pronouncement of the, the presidential spokesperson and even um, yung mga may kaso na sa korte uh, at hindi pa wala pang conviction, pwede pa rin silang kumandidato. Um, yung mga you know, yun sa mga, yung mga nasa narco list. Of course, kapag walang batas na nagmaman, nagmamandato sa kanila para kailangang mag-undergo uh, uh, mag ng drug testing, then voluntary dapat yun sa, sa mga kakandidato, especially na marami sila. Isa. Meron po akong mga nakausap po na ilan sabi po nila, yung mga estudyante daw po, kumbaga ay isinusulong natin na sumailalim sa mandatory drug testing yung mga elementary students. Bakit daw po yung mga kumakandidato kailangan pang maging voluntary? Okay, uh, in fact, yung dialogue natin with the Department of Education on this also met with a, I'd call it a stalemate. Dahil we did not win the support of the DepEd doon sa panukala ng aming mal na Director General at ng PIDEA rin actually na up to a certain age dapat abutin ng drug test. And for secondary and tertiary level, gawing uh, mandatory instead na random. So kailangan kasi ng, ano yan, ng Act of Congress para baguhin yung batas covering that. And same is true again for candidates. Uh, unless they amend the Omnibus Election Code, I guess uh, the drug test on either way, even for the students, will be purely based on what is the existing policy. So, as, but as I said, maganda naman yan kung yung advokasya po ng kandidato ay papakita niyang drug free siya. Uh, it's a welcome development. However, yun nga, at, at this point, as already mentioned by uh, Asik Rafael and our counterparts on the PNP at kami rin, and the presidential spokesperson, also already said, it, it, it's purely voluntary at the moment. Not unless nga maamiyandahan ang Omnibus Election Code. Any other questions from our dear friends? Okay. For PIDEA po. Yes. Sir, yung pong uh, recent study na ginawa ng PIDEA, uh, kineclaim na malaki yung correlation between the uh, seized dun sa magnetic lifters at yung 
uh, nasa market, nagpa-flood daw sa market ngayon. And uh, sinasabi po na bumagsak, medyo bumagsak yung presyo ng shabu dahil nga uh, they flood the market now. Ano po yung uh, measures na ginagawa ninyo at ng mga counterpart agencies para po uh, matugunan ito, lalo na kung mura nga ang bentahan ngayon? Well, as far as we're concerned, uh, yung... Yung sa, sinabi niyong study, yun, that's a scientific study, a standard of which was uh, followed after the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime procedure on impurity profiling of confiscated drugs. And uh, yun po naging basis natin para paghambingin yung control setup natin is nakuha sa MICP versus yung mga nakukuha sa labas, of which the correlation value turned out to be at 0.999, so mataas, meaning talagang kami naninindigan na ito'y nagmula sa nag-iisang source using the same manufacturing method. But, so much for that. At kasama dito, yung sinasabi niyong pagbagsak ng presyo, ang naging basihan naman po namin dito ay yung mga test buy ng aming mga operatiba on the ground. Okay? From July this year, we recorded the price per gram at 6,800 based on street transactions. 6,800 per gram. Right now, our transactions have revealed na, yun, unti-unting mo, Nagbabago from 2,000 per gram to 1,800, 1,600. And ngayon, may nakapag-negotiate ng uh, 1,400 per gram. The operation that happened covered by Al Jazeera over the weekend, uh, turns out our operatives negotiated for half a kilogram of shabu south of Manila in a parking lot. May video to, ha? may video evidence to. Yung kalating kilo, ang presyo nila, 900,000. Mababa talaga. Kasi ang test buy po, Ayan ang means natin upang malaman natin na itong katransak natin ay capable talaga na mag-dispense mag ng droga. Kasi otherwise, what's the point in conducting a buy-bust operation kung ang binibenta niya po ay puro tawas lamang? So the test buy will help us validate if we're really dealing with a legit target because, you know, it's terrible if you buy-bust somebody and all you get is asin or tawas or whatnot. So yun ang basis po natin. Now, the fact that we see this on the ground and our counterparts in the PNP have already mentioned that we will intensify efforts. The same is true for PIDEA. The only thing to do now is to focus our efforts on arresting everyone who's peddling drugs on the streets, regardless of whether they're small sachets or kilo-kilo, or worse, tonetonelada. We have to target all of them and take them out of the streets upang hindi na po sila makapagbiktima ng mga kababayan natin. All right, so any other? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon. I'm from the church, a church parish-based community program. Um, we used to have like a reckoning of 4 million users. This is as of April 20, 2017. With the success of the, we are in a year or two of the real numbers of the drug um, program of the government. How many do you say right now is the user of drugs in the Philippines? Pending the conduct of uh, any updated survey by the Dangerous Drugs Board, we still stick to the number four at 4 million. million. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you used to track the number of surrenderers. The last one was in July 26, 2017, I believe, and that was at 1.3 million Filipinos. How many are there now? Running total as of year two? It's still around that uh, number. Uh, we have not uh, had any update from uh, our our counterparts. Uh, what happens because what happens now is that we if we have to submit and consolidate with the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency before we issue the the numbers. So we have yet to consolidate the the new numbers of surrenders from from our uh, ground um, commanders. We will be issuing the official numbers on our next um, real numbers uh, next month. Yeah, next month, po, no, tama, eh? next month, so, so that we will provide the correct uh, numbers. Because I apo. think, in a you know, in a, at a glance, you will really see there the success of the operations, right? If you yes, po, apo. tremendously decrease the number of users apo. and the surrenderers, because you yes, claim that um, in your barangay cleared numbers. Um, an increase of 3.81 percent. 
You have 8,766 barangays which are drug cleared now. What would you say or attribute it to? The best practices, let's say, of your drug operations? Well, for the Philippine National Police, we, we really have increased. You know, we have doubled our efforts on our uh, uh, campaign. No? Um, yung pong ating tok tok hang yo, the tok hang, uh, which has been uh, uh, wrongly interpreted as the, our police operations. But the, the tok hang, of course, is our knock and plead program. Uh, that we have implemented from day one and effectively uh, we have surrendered 1.3 million as you have said and we have continuously uh, done that uh, over time. So we're attributing of course the success uh, of this um, campaign through our uh, Oplan Tokhang and of course the concerted efforts also that has been provided by the NGOs who are now working with us, the church, the academe who has um, actively participated in helping us um, ask the community at large to surrender uh, drug users or to help us uh, reach out to our drug users, hence the, the success of our um, Oplan Tokhang. So the Operation Tokhang still continues and this, the continuing um, operation yes, is the yes, one contributing to the drug cleared barangays of 8,766. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, ma'am, I'd like to add on the, the surrenders, the 1.3 something. Um, it has not increased so much in the past months because uh, the flock of those who surrendered then during the first months, even a month prior to uh, June 30, before President uh, Duterte um, um, took office, um, marami na pong nag-surrender noon. So after, after, after a few months from that time, since we started, when, when we published real numbers in May 2017, May 2017, um, yun po, hindi na rin masyado siyang nag-increase up to this date. So around, uh, once we give the figures, since we're validating the figures yet, um, hindi siya masyadong um, nag-increase. From that time, kasi iilan na rin yung nagsusurrender ngayon, maraming nagsurrender in the past. Uh, perhaps, um, um, we will be, we'll tr we're trying to, uh, to bring in the rehabilitation um, data for next month so that we can look into uh, the picture of, because it's not just rehabilitation, it's reformation. There are certain stages so that we'd be able to understand where, we are, where we're going this time, like after surrendering what happens now. So we'll do best to be able to provide the numbers um, and uh, we'll bring in the efforts of the private sector, of the religious sector, of course, and go the government side into um, trying to rehabilitate uh, our uh, drug surrenders and drug users. Okay, so there's another question here. Thank you so much. Albert Antibo from DWWW774. Just a follow-up question regarding the drug cleared barangays. And by the way, I'd like to congratulate you all for uh, your efforts. In fact, 8,766 out of 42,044. So half now, just a question, there are still 23,262 uh, barangays to be cleared. Uh, I just want to know in particular, what island are these uh, barangays coming from? Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Thank you. Yes, sir. The drug-affected barangays are spread out. They're spread out. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Unfortunately, I do not have the updated uh, details on... Uh, which are which which ones belong to Luzon? Which ones belong to Visayas? Definitely, the national capital region is still part of it. Uh, of course, there are vigorous efforts on the ground to continue clearing these drug-affected barangays. And the challenge, sir, is for these drug-cleared 8,766 to remain drug-cleared. All right. Thank you for that answer, sir. The reason why I'm asking, in particular, what island? Luzon, besides Mindanao, because kung mas madaming drug uh, operations doon, that means parang ang bilis makapasok ng drugs doon sa mga islands na yun. So, I think, uh, next question is, ano yung mga uh, ginagawa ninyo ngayon para mas strengthen the uh, drug problems to, to solve rather than drug problems? 
I think just to comment that it's not necessary that if it's the more number of barangays in that area is it's more easier for the drug uh, for the drugs to get into that area. Uh, it's not necessary for for example like even if for NCR alone it's not necessary that the drugs came from from here or came from somewhere else. Hindi po ganun yung ating basihan. But we have specific parameters that has been established by the DB, by the D, by the sorry for the Dangerous Drug Board and of course PDEA and us on how to categorically say that the barangay is cleared. Uh, for the continued efforts, we are. Uh, continuously working with our barangay uh, chairman, yes, yung ating badak, we're strengthening the badak. We are trying to rebuild and um, strengthen. Kasi po meron naman po talaga tayong mga badak na kahit nung past administration, let's just say, o yung past government natin, medyo humina, pero may naman, meron po tayong badak talaga na they have sustained their efforts also, uh, depending on how the LGU has supported them. And of course, we are we are happy na yun nga po, we have reported over 8,000 barangays. And as what uh, my counterpart Derek has said, the challenge is to sustain those barangays and add more. So we we the it's a joint effort amongst the PDEA and the PNP, of course. And now the other government law enforcement uh, agencies are getting on board to help us um, clear yung mga barangays na yon. Uh, and also to be able to provide uh, programs then na applicable to those barangays na na clear na natin para ma sustain natin yon and of course tuli tuli po yung operations natin especially now that we are on the advent of our election period no medyo uh, yan yung binabantayan natin of course to make sure na hindi naman uh, magkaroon pa ng problema yung na-clear natin na barangays and we continue to clear the other barangays even the, in the advent of our election period. Okay, so we have last three questions um, here muna and then I'll go at the other side. Magandang hapon po. Abner Mercado po ng EBS-CBN. Uh, preambol lang po muna. Uh, nung tumakbo po ang Pangulo, talagang hayagan niyang sinasabi uh, sa anim na buwan, lulutasin niya ito. Kung ano man po ang pagtingin natin doon at dalawang taon na, et, eto pinag-uusapan pa rin natin at sinasabing maituturing pa rin tagumpay ito. Sa tingin niyo po, kahit na ah, kamay na bakal na ang ginagamit ng Pangulo dito at talagang sinasabi niya na ayaw niya ng droga, okay? Pero bakit patuloy pa rin po tayo sa tingin niyo na nandito pa rin po tayo sa laban na ito at bakit sa tingin nyo, ang lalakas pa rin ng loob ng mga sindikato at ng mga tao na gumagamit na baka pwedeng ceasefire na muna, apat na taon pa lang naman ang matitira sa Pangulong ito, baka yung susunod na Panguluhan, hindi po ganito ang, 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 ang gagawin niya pong kumbaga brand ng kanyang Panguluhan. Kayo po na nasa dito po sa uh, pagtugi sa mga ito, paano nyo po nakikita yung psikolohiya po ngayon? nitong problema po natin sa droga. Maraming salamat sa katanungan niyo, sir. Uh, simulan po natin dun sa kampanya mismo. Uh, nabanggit na rin po ni Director General Aron Aquino, kaya nga po siya mismo. Uh, in fact, uh, yung iba niyang programa na sinimulan, tinutulig sana po kami dahil sabi, teka muna, hindi na trabaho ng PDEA yan. Ngunit kailangan po eh, katulad din ng kapulisan, Meron po silang mga programa na bukod sa nang huhuli kami, we also venture into community or interventions or programs for, especially for general intervention, lalo na po dun sa mga hindi pa naman talaga sugapa, ika nga, sa users. And then yung sa amin po, nag nagtatag kami sa tulong ng local government unit ng Balay Silangan. Kasi sir, hindi po, po pwedeng, sabi nga ni Director General Aron Aquino, at tama rin po kayo, palagi ko sa pananaw ninyo. Kung puro kamay na bakal lang tayo, baka talagang aabuti na tayo ng siyam-siyam dito kasi kaya nga po yung kampanya ng mahal na Pangulo natin, tapang at malasakit. May, ka may kakibat na malasakit yan. At ito po yung tinatawag natin, yung balay silangan. Kasi alam natin, batid natin, kat dito sa mga ibang nasangkot dito, nasangkot lamang dahil wala silang kabuhayan. So, it, it's partly also because of other social factors na kailangan nating bigyan ng maganda-gandang katugunan. 
kahirapan yun yung isa. Kaya po yung balay silangan na riyan itinatag sa tulong ng local government units at other stakeholders kasi ang intent po niya, reformatory, yung tao hindi gumagamit pero napipilita maging runner, maging courier, maging uh, tulak, o tagapasa, o mga middleman ng droga, o kung ano, basta kasama sa supply chain. Dahil nga po, wala siyang kabuhayan. So, yun ang isa sa mga naging programa natin. Kailangan po dyan talaga balance ang ating supply and demand reduction strategies and programs. Dahil kapag puro operations lamang po tayo, uh, talagang it will not solve the problem. Uh, kung puro lang po arrests, filing of cases, and then... But then again, gawi po tayo dun sa mga nagpaparating naman, sir. Nasa aming pananaw po sa PIDEA, uh, of course, led by our Director General, na... Sabi po niya, may nakausap nga siyang miyembro mismo ng sindikato during an interview of the suspect. Bakit ba kayo kalalakas ng loob niyo magparating dito sa Pilipinas? Pasok pa rin kayo ng pasok dito. Alam niyo na nga mahigpit dito, nagkakamatayan na nga sa kalsada. Eh, ang sagot daw po nung, nung suspect, eh, papaano? Yun nga, unang-una po, alam nila, walang bitay dito. Pangalawa, alam nila, meron at merong pwedeng bayaran. So, yun po ang malungkot na katotohanan dito sa atin na hanggat while there are people who can be corrupted, then I guess, uh, kaya tama po yung panawagan ng ating mahal na Pangulo na bukod sa wakasan ng problema sa droga, dapat talaga maging mahigpit tayo na labanan ang korupsyon. Dahil kapag ganyan po, uh, yun nga, may handicap na nga tayo at wala tayong death penalty, plus may mga korap pa sa ating hanay, uh, talagang mahihirapan po tayo, sir. So, um... We have a last question from there. Can ah, sorry, you, do you have any additional? Yeah, sorry, may additional lang po si Just a quick addition. Siguro po, uh, yun, tama, tama po yung, just, just to uh, add dun sa sinabi po ng ating uh, counterpart sa PIDEA. Uh, tama po yun, no? Talagang uh, it's about corruption, in fact. Uh, as long as there are greedy people who who would accept no, yung ating... Uh, uh, pera para maipasok yung droga sa ating bansa ay talaga pong magkakaroon at magkakaroon tayo. Uh, isa po yan sa pinamalak, pinakamalaking challenge na nakikita natin. Kahit po sa hanay namin, no? uh, kaya patuloy po yung ating paglilinis sa ating hanay dahil uh, yung corruption po at yung bribery talagang malakas po yan. No? Para, kaya sabi, nga, sabi nyo nga po, bakit hindi natin matigil? Dahil nga po, as long as may mga tumatanggap, uh, mag, meron at meron po tayo. And uh, siguro isa po na natin, we have to look at it that this drug trade is a business. You know, it's business in itself. It's money for, for uh, people outside and inside of this country. And they will do, like any other business, to sustain or to, to grow your business, you have to uh, find a way to maintain your business in any country, especially in our country where, where they have seen yung vulnerability ng ating ibang uh, uh, members of the government na talagang they, they allow, you know, the, the uh, bribery to come in and they allow yung ating drugs. Uh, what we see here is that, um, like, sasabihin, just, as, uh, just a story that um, I was in Colombia during the, uh, during the uh, voting po no, ng kanilang um yung kalayaan from the farts and uh, one of the young people there has spoken when the no votes has happened has won no in Colombia and one of the young people there uh, said that the no vote in Colombia has won because the people of Colombia has spoken i think it's about time that the philippines uh, people of the philippines you know we we take we take on this campaign and help the president um uh, fight talaga yung illegal drugs. I think that when we all come on board and help in, in any way that we can, even an ordinary citizen can help us really advance the campaign against illegal drugs and, and together probably we can really solve this issue and advance it to, uh, to achieve whatever the president has uh, promised. I think that the president has only taken the, the role of being a father to this nation. And I think it's important that as members of this society, we help him achieve the, the uh, win against these illegal drugs that uh, he has recognized as really a problem in our country. All right, thank you. Uh, one last question. We will just enter one question. Um, one last. 
Hi, sir and ma'am. Uh, may isa pa later. Sorry. Okay. okay. Sir and ma'am, Alan po of BTV. Um, sir, so I would assume that, the, I mean, what's the stand of PIDEA with regards to the death penalty? As you just stated before uh, about the death penalty. Of course, it's, an issue, it's a policy issue, sir. No, mm -hmm. But if we were to be asked, it would help that there is a, deter there's a stronger deterrent rather than just jail or the prison term. Kasi, yun nga po, uh, parang kulang yung chilling effect, eh, especially if they see na, uh, although, of course, we know, we, we recognize and we respect, I mean, we, uh, we laud our counterparts in the Bureau of Corrections for instituting, instituting the changes that are already there now. But still, uh, if we have a stronger stand by showing them that there is death for traffickers, mm -hmm. especially, we're talking about traffickers in okay. particular, Traffickers, manufacturers, smugglers, those who bring in drugs through large volumes and corrupt our system. Uh, there should be something stronger against them rather than just a prison term. Okay. Sorry, next question. Um, according to this uh, paper, entry points of illegal drugs are coastline, airport, seaport, and mail and parcel. Okay. I understand there are some reports uh, that I've been hearing no, na there are some uh, syndicates who are using, I mean, who are selling drugs online. So your measure on this, sir, to solve this or to control this at least? Online selling of drugs, sir. I think there are some reports about that. Well, of course, uh, on an actual note, uh, we encounter a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, a, it's a complex uh, intervention of, of course, uh, linking up with our counterparts on the Philippine National Police in, because they have a cybercrime group and likewise with the NBI. But on transaction basis, talaga, yan, it is a challenge because uh, these drugs that they sell online, they don't just transact with anyone. They use online currency, particularly gaming currency or bitcoins. Then you cannot just access the site itself. You'll have to download a certain... You'll have to download a certain uh, special router to access the site, and then you have a bitcoin account and all that. But definitely, our, our agents are on top of this, and we've made several arrests on uh, people transacting online. But of course, panawagan din natin dito sa mga magulang. Watch what your children access closely. Because I've seen kids younger than five already very good with gadgets. And this is really a problem. So kailangan po talaga dito, yung sinabi ni Colonel Kim kanina, ang mga kababayan po natin dapat talaga pagtulungan natin to problema ito na hanggang, sa, let's start with the family. Make your family the basic drug fighting crime fighting social unit so that we you know uh, families put together and communities put together make our country drug resistant so but definitely yes it's a challenge to be dealing with all these online and uh, we have made uh, some strides of success on this of course in coordination with the pnp and the nbi and other law enforcement agencies thank you so we have one last question here ma'am isa na lang po uh then after that, we will do our closing statement. Yeah. Good afternoon po. Sir Karyon, um, Kathleen Gonzalez po from Inquire.net. Sir, ask ko lang po yung reaction ng PIDEA about sa sinabi po ni Chief Albayalde yesterday. He said po na parang he seems to counter the statement of PIDEA saying na mas mura na daw po yung drugs sa Pilipinas. He said po na sa street level naman po parang walang pinagkaiba. What's your reaction on it, sir? Eh, si Colonel Kim na lang po magpaliwanag dahil uh, we, we, uh, we respect the statement because palagay ko meron din silang pinag, uh, pinaguhugutan from there. I'll just have to explain what you said. I think it's a matter of the use of the Tagalog word walang pinagkaiba. The GPNP meant walang pinagkaiba kung mas cheaper or expensive yung drugs. That's what he meant on the statement that he said yesterday. Because at the end of his statement, he said, uh, if, if, if the statement of the PDA is true, we're going to, we, have, we, are, we cannot do anything else but to double our efforts and support the operations uh, being conducted by PDA. Uh, the, the, what he meant is that it wouldn't change our, anything that we do on the ground, regardless if it's more expensive or it's cheaper. We will still do the same and even uh, double our efforts, in fact, if it's true that there's more uh, drugs on the streets now. That's, that's actually what the, the chief meant when he said that about the... He was not contradicting, contradicting I'm sorry, he was not contradicting the statement of PDEA that it's cheaper. He, he meant 
he meant what I just said earlier. He meant that it doesn't matter if it's cheaper or it's more expensive. And then um, he, he went on by saying that we will double our efforts if it's true that there's more drugs on the streets now. Um, uh, follow up lang po. I think he also said that it should be the dangerous drugs board who should say if nagmura na po talaga yung... Yes, he, sa he said also that we will wait for the uh, determination uh, because the official publication naman really comes from uh, the Dangerous Drugs Board. Uh, as what uh, Director Carion has explained earlier, the figure that they mentioned was about, was a result of the buy bus that they do on the streets. Uh, yung galing sa mga operatiba natin. So those are things that we cannot contest. If it's what they have uh, bought from that specific time and place, then it is. If it's more expensive or it's cheaper, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we continue our efforts on the, on the war against illegal drugs and we will continue to support whatever uh, PDEA is uh, wanting to do on the streets to be able to curb, uh, especially yung ating street level uh, pushing and use. All right. Thank you, so, Thank you po, ma'am. Maraming salamat po. And may closing statement po ba? Wala na? Closing statement from Assistant Secretary Adam Mardiba Naag and our speakers. Thank you, Director Pebbles. Sa mga kasamahan natin sa Real Numbers PH, thank you so much to the PDEA, to the PNP, to the NBI, the BOC, the um, DOH, DDB, and other agencies who contribute a lot, the PMS, of course, who contribute a lot dun sa preparation po ng mga data natin and yung mga discussions po dun sa mga sensitive na issues po uh, every time that we release our data. Thank you so much. Sa lahat po ng sigalot, sa lahat ng mga kontrobersya that is surrounding the anti-legal drugs program ng ating pamahalaan, uh, we know um, on behalf of Secretary Martin Andanar and of course sa mga heads po ng mga ahensya ng uh, enforcement at saka sa rehab, alam namin po na nagtatrabaho po kayong lahat. And of course, um, with the controversy between PDEA and uh, and the BOC I'd like to uh, I'd like to make a comment that we'd await for with better it, it's best for us to await for the investigation of the National Bureau of Investigation and if there are other investigations that would be conducted by, by the Senate or the or or Congress um, we wanted na we we of course um, sa real numbers PH we are not we are not happy with what is going on right now but we know na nagtatrabaho po kayong lahat kaya po kayo nasasadlak sa ganitong mga intriga and we are with PDEA we are with BOC we are with the PNP and we are with the NBI through all this maraming salamat po at magandang hapon so thank you so much. This has been the presser, the real numbers. Maraming salamat po our media friends and all of our participants.